Michelle Walter. I always forget to name myself because not everybody knows who I am. But um, we are going to try and do uh, videos more often and more than likely Sundays, um, uh, more likely than other days, just because I'm dressed from church or whatever. It just cuts down on the prep time for me physically. I'm not in my you know, yoga pants or, or casual things that I, that I wear just working around the house. Um, but we're going to have these uh, casual chats and uh, I'm, I'm also going to try and make a goal of incorporating a lesson of some kind in our chat. So hoping I've got a um, second device here to see when the video will show up so I feel like I'm actually talking to you and, and not into de dead space. So it looks like the video is coming up and hopefully I'll be able to see your, your uh, comments too. So be sure and like and love and laugh and whatever. Yes. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me check and see if we have audio here. Yeah, I hear it. I'm um, testing, testing. Let me, let me check and see yeah. if we have audio. Okay, we're good. So, okay, that's why we have multiple devices. Facebook is not always ideal. So, um, okay, now I'm trying to get out of this large screen so I can see the actual chat. Um, let's see. Bear with me, everybody. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. Okay, I think I'm seeing people coming in, but I can't get out of this screen. Facebook, why are you so difficult sometimes? Okay, there it is. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. I just want to... Make sure I can see what's going on here. Okay. All right, so everyone, uh, Gary is monitoring on his device so that, because uh, I won't be able to be watching every question that comes in. Uh, if you do have questions, we'll try and answer them. If I miss important things, sometimes there are just so many, I just can't answer each one individually. So hopefully if, um, if you've come in late and I've already covered something, you ask a question and I see it later after the video's done, I don't always go back and answer those. It's just a matter of watching the video. So I'm hoping you'll just go back and watch the entire video because a lot of those questions are answered in the video. We just realized you came in late and missed it. So, um, so, I assume your fans, if you're watching this video, you've been um, notified that we're coming to you live. Um, I'll touch on general items, but I do have a couple of things I wanted to show you as part of our uh, video so you'll walk away with something that uh, useful for your embroidery. So one of the things I wanted to touch on again was the uh, hair wrap towel that I came out with, um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. And um, someone had commented that I should, uh, they needed me to demonstrate how the hair wrap actually works. And I, you know, I assume a lot of things and maybe I assume too much that all the women know how to wrap their hair in a towel, but you know, maybe not. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate, but I'm not going to turn my head upside down and do all that and, and end up with um, bed head for the rest of the video. So no, I'm not doing that. But I think I can do it on my little pressing ham. If you've never seen one of these for pressing your, you know, curves and things on your uh, clothing. So I think this can simulate somebody's head maybe a little smaller than the average head, but I think it'll still work. So what I'm gonna do is pretend, let's see, where would this person have their hair? I guess 
let's say this is the top of their head. Okay, so they put their head upside down. They put the towel all the way down to their neck. And this, I have not had time to make myself more towels because I've been stitching up uh, new items and doing some tests and putting out alphabet letters. That is so time consuming. So um, just want you to know, just because I'm only putting out alphabet letters doesn't mean I'm back here, you know, leisurely on vacation or something. It's hard work putting out those letters. So that's why I call them gift designs or free of charge uh, for the time being because um, I don't like the word just free designs. You know why? Because it's not really free. Somebody paid something for it. And so um, uh, a lot of labor and love and hard work goes into those designs. So they're really, they're free of charge. They're not without value because someone, I put a lot of work into those for you. So they're gifts. They're gift designs that I'm offering free of charge temporarily. But anyway, so I've been busy working on those and, and making sure I keep up with that and haven't had a chance to make myself more towels. So this towel is the one I demonstrated last week that uh, is stitched a little bit farther from the edge than I feel it should be. It needs to be stitched as close to the edge as you can hoop it. So um, that this is really close to the neck once you put it on. So I'm gonna pretend this person has their head tipped upside down like this. This is their neck back here. So this will be close to the neck back here once it's placed properly. And they're wrapping their hair and I'm gonna need to do something like this. Oh yeah, you can see me. All right, so they wrap their hair in here and they bring it up behind their head. The little ends, tails, and then they pass this through the loop. And that's it. Of course, it would be a much neater job. But it's the practical thing is that it holds it in place so that when they're bending down and putting lotion on their legs or uh, doing their, you know, painting their toenails or whatever it is you're doing, you, you're not going to lose your towel and it's not heavy, it doesn't weigh anything. I cannot handle a heavy towel on my head for too long. So this is just really a great way to, uh, to do the same thing I've always done all my life with a heavy um, bath towel. Just do it with one of these flower sack towels and um, it works really well. So I hope that's enough of a demonstration for those who were, weren't sure what it was we were doing with these. But, um, and it's great for children because they don't weigh anything. And um, um, it's just such a practical thing to do. So just like I mentioned last week, I am gonna do a whole bunch of these. And of course, can do these in different colors. The stitches, the embroidery thread in any color, even the variegated threads, that would be really pretty. For the children, I think that would be fun to, um, have a, uh, those variegated threads have like, there's a rainbow version, and then there's oranges and yellows with pale, uh, uh, yellow, almost white. There's all kinds of fun colors that, that could be used on, or could be used for that. That would be just fun for the kids. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you, have there anybody questions or anything? Mm -hmm. Huh? Somebody was wondering if you've got any earrings Oh my goodness, I haven't gotten back to earrings in a while. And um, as I was getting dressed, I was like, you know, I need to start making all kinds of different colored earrings so that um, I can start wearing my jewelry when I'm doing videos so you can see it on me and stuff. But uh, no, I haven't done any new earrings in a little while. I've got a bunch of stuff in the works, but I just haven't I've got lots of started designs, but you know, it's a process to actually go complete it and then test it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's 
I just have to feel it. Sometimes I have to put away a project because I, I just don't want to look at it for now. And, or I've lost my inspiration on which direction I want to go with it. And I'll put it away and then I'll go back to working on my, you know, uh, branches or, um, uh, you know, something else that I've put away from the past. And then when it hits me, it's like, oh man, I can't wait to finish this. This is going great. And, and I just have to feel it and, and really get involved with it to actually finish a project. So when you see the final thing, it's because it just took me there and I was able to accomplish it. But I have to have that energy to want to, to that love of what I'm doing for that particular specific design to actually finish it, test it, you know, it's such a long process that I just, if I lose my wind on a design, I don't just throw it away, I put it away because I know I'll get excited about it later on and I always come back to those. So yeah, I need to come back to earrings. Um, uh, I've got some stuff in the works and I just need to get back to some of those and finish them. But that, there are tons to choose from already. So unless you own them all, you may want to browse because uh, the Halloween earrings are really cute. And if you haven't seen the uh, spooky video, uh, it's right here on, on Facebook. Just scroll to the, uh, or look for the videos and, and scroll down to, I think it was last year I released that. Maybe it was longer. Time just flies sometimes. And um, it may have been the year before, but just take a look at that spooky video if you haven't seen it. It's really fun. It, it, I like the music. But the haunted house earrings are really, really cute. Um, and so are the uh, jack-o'-lanterns. And then there are owls. There are just all kinds of earrings. So if you haven't browsed the uh, earring pages, um, you really should. There are a lot of, uh, I forget how many pages there are actually. I've lost track of how many uh, different kinds of earrings we've got out, but there are pages. So, but I promise I will come up with something else in the future. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is I posted a picture this morning or this early afternoon. I'd say now I've lost track already. Um, to d today, let's just say I posted a picture today of a towel I did with um, the Renaissance alphabet. D and let's see I wish I wish this would this live was the same timing as my iPad here but I, I'm way behind on the iPad okay now I can see that you can see all right so the letter D and then this is the lowercase that goes with it which is the same as the uh, um, the lowercase that goes with the winter pines alphabet it's the winter pines lower case. So um, anyway, you can make words to go with your with your uh, alphabet letters. But um, you know, this isn't really a Christmas specific alphabet. It's just an alphabet that looks Christmassy to me. Renaissance, those colors um, in the old masters paintings, and, and with the golds and the jewel tones and and things are a little dark and the dark golds the yeah the darker golds the uh, amber colors the you know everything by candlelight that's why a lot of the paintings look like that they're a little dark and warm colors because of the glow of candlelight because that's all they had so everything's kind of influenced by the, the the candlelight that the painters had to paint by and um i just love that so um, that's why the Renaissance alphabet, I did it in those colors, but obviously it doesn't have to be in any particular color. It can match your decor. So I just thought this would be so pretty because I have those white dishes with the, um, uh, their Lennox um, dishes from, oh gosh, early 2000. Um, uh, and they have the dotted raised edges and, and just a lot of texture and so uh, I thought you know that's why I put the extra color stop so that the outside satin edge um, I, originally I had it with the original the outside 
edge would stitch out at the same time as the white area that you're seeing here. And then um, Angie Cumbie, who's been doing some samples for me to, and sharing the pictures, um, she had isolated the pearls one day. She just watched it and stopped the machine and changed her thread color. She has a single needle machine. And I liked it so much that I went back and redid all the letters that I'd done so far. I don't get very far on the alphabets all at one time. I'll design maybe three or four and then, um, and then test them and, and do the pictures. And I started doing them in little batches because repetition just kind of uh, grates on me. So I can't do that for too long. So I, I have to step away and do something different. So, but I've been doing, try, forcing myself to do more than just one letter at a time. And so I had done, I think I had done four letters when I launched with the letter A. And then when Angie stitched that out and, and showed it to me, I thought, oh my goodness, I really like that. And, and I don't know if it was the letter A or, I think it was the letter A. I think I had released the A and she stitched it with the white pearls. And I thought, oh, I need to go back and fix. I mean, believe me, I sat there and thought and thought and thought and thought. And I thought that's a lot of work to go back and create a color stop for that last section. And I really thought hard about it. And ultimately, I decided to go ahead and, and uh, change all the files. And, and so I did. And I went back and I changed the A also, which had already been downloaded by many of you. And then I announced it to you so that you could download it again and get the updated version with the um, five color stops. So, um, but I am really happy I did it because it's just, it just opens up more possibilities. I try to keep my colors um, to a minimum for changes. I mean, we could go on and on with color stops, but you know, I've got to draw the line somewhere. But the the um, um, the idea of just adding that last color stop, and it, you don't have to change the color because I don't in the samples I'm presenting to you in the alphabet as I release it. The last two colors are the same color. So, but in this one, I did go ahead and change the last color to the white to match my dishes. I just thought that was such a, a cool thing to be able to do that. So, um, and I just kept thinking, I have got to do this with the white pearls for something, you know. So, and when Angie did it with the gold and the white pearls, it, it was really gorgeous. It was, it was beautiful. So, anyway. So there you have it. There's the alphabet you have been collecting paired with the uh, Winter Pines lowercase. And every letter that uh, uh, you open to browse on the website in the description, all the links are underneath. We've been trying really hard, working, working really hard. My daughter, uh, Jennifer, has been working really hard to link up all of the, those items that are relatable and um, and the main menus so that when you when you go to a letter you don't have to try and figure out where's the rest of this alphabet and and what are the designs that coordinate with this it's you know we're trying to there are several links down there underneath the description so that you can kind of choose and the lowercase um, that goes with it is in the description also is is one of those links that way you don't have to guess which uh, uh, lowercase goes with this and where do I find it? So we've been trying to organize all those, um, um, all the designs and, and provide you links for easier browsing and so that you don't get lost and, and, um, uh, or frustrated. You know, we want to make it easy for you to browse all the fun stuff and, uh, and go smoothly through the site looking for, you know, if you're looking for a certain type of design. And, and um, so we're just, we're, we've been brainstorming this and Jennifer's been um, doing all of these changes for us. And that's why some links 
that used to lead to a particular product, they're sometimes dead. We're still working on those because when she added categories and we changed some of the uh, way we had them categorized, we've eliminated several categories that were kind of, um, uh, it, it just the, cat the main parent catalog on, on the left side of the website was getting a little too long, so we've eliminated some of those. Anyway, so every time you change a catalog name, or, or yeah, I think when you change a name, then the links that lead to those designs, they, they become dead. So we're trying to correct those as well. So if you ever have questions about those, let us know. She has also been improving the search feature on the website so that it actually takes you to, to the item you're, you're searching for or relatable items uh, according to your search. So we've been trying to improve on a lot of stuff. And if the website is capable of handling things, we've been trying to um, do our part to improve it. Okay, so any questions? None? Okay. So let me see where everybody is from, let's see if we have. There's Australia and Germany. And oh, wow. Australia, Germany. Um, you know, I noticed <clears throat> the other day I'm into anal uh, analysis. I love uh, just, just um, some of those um, behind the scenes uh, information, charts and things. And I noticed that uh, the number one country that our customers are from is uh, the USA, but second was Germany. It was that I found that really inter interesting, and I think uh, Italy and France were in there. Um, but I thought Germany, wow, I I just hadn't seen that before. So cool. Well, we welcome all Ohio, you. Louisiana, wow, Sweden, Sweden. wow, Hill, Delaware. Wow, it's it's such a small world. The the internet to me is just so. Yes, there are a lot of bad things about it, but Minnesota, I love that our world is now reachable. We can't travel to you know most of us can't travel to every corner of the earth and can't meet all the people that we meet online. Um, that you know, so this just makes it possible to meet friends and people with common interests and and to you know for you guys to become our fans and for us to be able to interact with you is just to me it's just it's kind of it's a gift you know we have to be careful online of course but it's still a gift and a blessing to be able to to meet you and talk with you and you know exchange ideas and, and it's just to me, it's just the coolest thing. I don't think I could have this business be viable or be able to, to have it as a true uh, income without the internet. I just, uh, the kind of foot traffic we would have to have for that is just, I don't think it could happen. We, our customers are not in one place. They're all over the world, obviously. So we thank you for being fans, and we're excited that you're here. All right, so here's what I think I'm going to teach you today. It's probably old school for you now, but I'll tell you the way I do it, and maybe you can, you know, find some of this helpful. Now, a lot of the stuff that I teach, that I teach you, and that I, my tips and all that, they're in my directions. They've always been in my directions. Um, and a lot of you may not realize, but every file that I release includes directions. Some directions are more complex than others, but I try to make them as clear and step-by-step -step as possible. And there's always a color list. Um, uh, most of the directions include color numbers, uh, there was a time when I was including, when I, um, when I first started, the first few years, I was including all of the color numbers for Madeira polyester. 
and I would get a lot of people commenting that they don't use the, they don't pay attention to the color numbers because they maybe use a different brand and, or they're doing their own thing. And so I just started listing color descriptions. And I always explain what a color is going to stitch. I try and explain it, you know, so the, Color number two is the branch, you know, the lighter color, lightest color branches, or color number four are the uh, uh, medium green leaves, or, you know, things like that. So you at least have an idea of what those colors are. So, but for a couple of years, I stopped putting in the color numbers. I thought, oh, well, nobody wants these color numbers, so that kind of saves me a lot of work. I'll just describe the colors. And then sure enough, I started getting people saying, I wish you would put the actual color numbers in. So I never, I started doing that again and I never stopped doing it since then. So there is a little gap in there where there are no color numbers, but there are color uh, descriptions and the description of what that color is used on in the design so that you can go through the list very carefully and follow that, uh, whether you pick your own colors or not. But I, I get a lot of people writing me, asking me questions about how to do such and such, and it's in the directions. So you're really just having me look up the directions, copying from there, or, or I have to open the directions because I forget, you know, I, I can't off the top of my head right directions for a particular design. So please, please know that every design has either a text file from way back when, when we didn't have the PDF, and um, all the, you know, for years now, all the designs will have PDFs. So either early ones have text files and the, the and then after that, it was all PDF. So one or the other will be in your um, uh, download for um, the design. So please remember that if you can. Not to say don't ask us questions. I'm just asking you to please, since you're listening, you're here, I'm, I've got your ear, you have directions that come with your design. All right. So... I, the first thing I do, this is a linen towel I made. This is um, L, no, I-164, I think. The 5.3 ounce linen from fabricsstore.com. They have the most awesome linen. Okay, so this is the, um, uh, 5.3 weight, but it's a little bit finer than the, they have two versions. One's a little more um, um, regular texture linen. The other one's a little bit finer linen. So if you have any questions about that, ask, ask them. They'll be happy to tell you which one that is. But um, L019 or 109, I think, is the regular um, uh, weave. And then the, the other one, I just... I can't remember the item name, but it's a finer weave, the, the finer of the two that are 5.3 ounce, and that's what this is. It is so nice. I just love this linen. Okay, so I always take, and I think, okay, somebody's going to ask me this. This is 17 inches wide finished, I believe, and it's, I don't have a tape measure here. And I think I made it 32 inches long. So this is kind of a long towel. Um, the first thing I do when I'm getting ready to embroider something like this is, and I've said this, said this a lot, but um, I can't talk to the whole world in one, in one post. So there'll be a lot of you who haven't heard me say this or seen me write this. I iron, I, I starch and iron until it's nice and stiff. So somebody asked me to show them last week, they wanted me to show them how stiff, but I, I don't know if I can do that on camera. I mean, it's, it's stiff. I, when I spray it, 
I let it, I mean, it turns dark because it's actually wet. It's not dripping, but it's all the way through the fibers. And then I don't plop the iron on a wet, wet towel. So I'll use a pressing cloth if I need to get this done and I don't have patience for it to just dry on its own. Um, I'll go ahead and put a pressing cloth on it. And then when it's down to where it's just damp, then I'll take the pressing cloth off and keep pressing. But the thing is, I do that three times. So one time for me is not quite enough. I repeat that about three times. And then when it's finally starched and um, correctly for me, it's, it's just stiff. It feels like, um, I'm not sure how, how to tell you, like almost like a canvas bag, I guess. I mean, it's not thick like canvas, but it's stiff like canvas. Um, so all I can say is soak it three times, soak it once, iron it, soak it twice, iron, I mean a second time, iron it, soak it a third time, iron it. Then it'll be the right stiffness. Um, what I've been doing is when I have a pile of towels, I'll go ahead and, and soak them all, you know, just spray. I'll have a stack right here, six maybe, spray, and I'm spraying the area that's going to be hooped. So this towel is really sprayed to about right here, about two inches from the edge, and here's the middle, and it's almost to the top. So I just a nice big area to make sure that it's going to be um, outside the, the hoop that I intend to use so that uh, I'm not just supporting the stitched area, I'm supporting the area that's going to be in the hoop because that needs to be strengthened and stiffened to support itself when you start pulling to make it drum taut. All right, so that's how I prepare my towels. So this one needs one more ironing because I think I soaked it the last time and didn't iron it right away. I just let it dry. And so now, uh, pre-prepped, pre I would take it to the ironing board and just mist it lightly with starch. It's so really a fourth time since I let it dry and then iron it so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so it'll, it'll just be beautiful and ready for hooping. So then before I hoop, I need to know where I'm gonna put my design. So for something like this, this is gonna be a placement, a uh, little placement lesson. Okay, so to find your center, and I hardly ever mark my things with pencils or, or if I use anything, I'll use chalk on this, but there's really no need for me to, to um, mark it because what I do is I fold my towel like this, find my center the length lengthwise. Okay? And I and this one is nicely squared because I sewed it. But a lot of the, the pre pre done towels that you buy, pre made towels, are not going to be squared. So just find the happy medium and and um, uh, to find the center of your towel. And then lay it down. The hems are together. And that's one of the things I look for is my hems are together. Even if this is crooked over here, I want to make sure my hems are together. I don't want to go by the edges like this. And then you have your design all tilted once you, you stitch it out. So the important thing is the hem needs to be together. The edges need to be together. And then whatever happens here, find the happy medium on the sides, okay? So, now this has been pressed and ironed and it's pristine. That's what I'm, uh, at this point, that's what I usually I'm working with, okay? So we'll pretend it's been pressed. So I find the center this way. And because it's been starched, it leaves a nice crease, see? All right, so then for the other side, get this hoop out of my way for a second. All right, so now the other side, it's folded lengthwise, right? Okay, now we need to find 
Let's fold it in half as if we were putting this towel away. Okay, fold it in half this way so that you know where the center of the towel is. Okay, and then I'll just finger press the center so I know where it is. Open the towel back up, not all the way out, but just undo the fold I just did. Now, to find the center between the hem and the center of the towel, I just fold the hem up to that center fold that I just pressed with my fingers. This is assuming you want to place the design in the center of the half of the towel, of the front half of the towel. So there's my crease for the other, for the cross mark, for the width of the design. So there's the center of the towel. The top fold is the center of the actual towel. And that crisscross here is the center of this half of the towel, okay? And that's usually where I put my designs. I, I like my designs up a little higher because um, I just, I, they look pretty when there's, there's a design here, but I always feel like, uh, well, how, are the, how is your guests going to dry their hands? There's a design in the way, you know? I, I'm all, I don't know. I tend to be logical. Maybe you like it near the bottom, near the hem, so you can do that too. It's just my way of thinking, and that's the way I like to do it. So if you want your design closer to your hem, decide where you want it. And then once you know where the center of your design is going to be, if you print it out and then just lay it on your towel how you want it, mark the center of your design. So now, let's say you want it somewhere in here. You marked it here. Okay, so you have the, the center from high to from bottom to the top. Now all you have to do is fold the towel at that mark where you decided you want the center of your design to be. You just fold your towel exactly like I just did. And then you'll have the mark for the center of the design as you want to place it. So it's the same principle regardless of how high up the towel you want to put the design. So um, just, it's just a matter of knowing where the center of your design is. Just make sure your, your design is going to fit there. That's why you would want to print it. And then once you, and if the, the print has the crosshairs on it, simple. You just uh, uh, put it there. You can even mark it with chalk if you want the crosshairs. You're only needing to, to mark your horizontal line. And then just fold your towel the way that I just showed you to make sure you have a mark that's nice and even. So instead of trying to have a flat towel and then mark, you know, where the fold, where the crosshairs are going to be and measure and you can use the template too. The template will help a lot. But I have found that this, I, I never even pull out my templates unless I really need to know where my, if I'm doing something on the diagonal in my hoop or something like that, then I pull out a template just to make sure I have my diagonal correct because these hoops are not squared. So the diagonal is not exactly corner to corner. So I would need a template to, to figure that out. But um, other than that, that's all you do. Now, when you go to hoop your, your towel, all I do is slide, and this, these hoops are for the multi-needle uh, baby lock, so it's going to look a little different than yours, but it's the same thing. You, you're going to have an outer hoop and an inner hoop, so this is my outer hoop. I put it down, and I try to place the towel close to, you know, I can kind of feel where the edges are and just kind of guess that this is near the center, my crisscross folds. And then I've got, my hoop is wrapped to keep my fabric from slipping. This is leftover tacky violin wrapped around my hoop. I have a video on that on our educational videos page. 
but there are center marks right here and there's also the criss the cross marks this way so I have center marks both directions and I just match those up with my fold so I just go ahead and match my marks and then I kind of slide my hoop to where it meets the bottom hoop and it's hooped and my mark you can see the uh, you may not be able to see it on the but my marks are exact with the fold and then what I do is turn my hoop upside down and this is just I always go over this because you need to know this I pull my my fabric this is why starching until it's stiff is very important because if this fabric weren't starched, the weave would do this. If I try to pull it any at all, even minuscule amounts, the weave will start doing this. You know, so when it's starched, everything tends to move together and will support the weave, um, will help support the weave as you pull. But you're not pulling like tugging hard. You're pulling just enough to take off, take up a little bit of the slack and you go all the way around, you take up the slack and you see the weave. So you don't wanna do anything that's gonna distort the weave and you see it move and you, it's just a little, just a little, you keep going around until it's nice and drum talk. Probably a couple of times, it takes me about 30 seconds to do a hooping. And, um, and then it's ready to go. Then notice I don't hoop my stabilizer. So for this, I would use tear away. And I would just take this to the machine, put the hoop on the machine, and then I take my tear away and slide it under the hoop. And I cut my tear away into five inch wide strips. And I just, I just make, cut a whole bunch of strips. So I always have my, my uh, stabilizer ready to go. And I slide the end of my strip under the hoop, and when it's done, I tear it off. Next one, I slide the end of, you know, where it left off, slide it under the next hooping, and like that, instead of cutting little squares. Although you can do that too. But um, it just saves on stabilizer not to be cutting little squares, and it's not difficult to have a little strip of stabilizer sticking out from under the hoop. Once the machine starts stitching, the stabilizer stays in place. So that's how I do this uh, typical woven cloth um, uh, and how I stabilize it. So there you have it. Any questions? Nothing? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do for today. Maybe next week, if we can do this again, um, we can do um, a little bit more um, on hooping, but maybe for an object that you can't hoop. How about we think about that? What do we do if we can't hoop our project? So um, I'll look into doing something about that for next week and um, show you what it is that I do to take care of something like that. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you'll be here next week if we're here. I, we're not promising, we're trying, we promise we're gonna try to have more videos and probably on Sunday. But we might surprise you and have them on a different day. So uh, just hang with us. Be sure and like and love and all the button, all the good buttons. And um, um, just stick with us and I'll try and make announcements as, as often as I can and keep you inspired and, and keep you wanting to get to your machine to stitch something. So have a great Sunday afternoon or maybe Monday morning on the other side of the world by now. And we thank you for joining us and we will see you soon.